Hi everyone, Ms. Tui here. Today you will continue to learn how to program Ozobot with Ozoblockly. You'll focus on sequences in today's lesson. For today's lesson, you will need an Ozobot fully charged and calibrated and the Ozoblockly editor. After today's lesson, you will be able to define the word sequence as it is used in computer science, use a block code editor, and create your own sequence of code. The word sequence can be defined in many situations. Most often, it is a group of events that happen in a certain order. For example, when you get dressed in the morning, you put on your pants, socks, and shoes. Do you put on your socks first or your shoes? I would say most people put on their socks first. What would happen if you put on your shoes first? In computer science, a sequence is an ordered set of instructions. In other words, it is a series of commands or codes that happen in a certain order. Most of the time, the order of the codes is important. Sequence can also be used as a verb, which means to arrange instructions in a particular order. Let's get started. Be sure to have Ozo Blockly open. You'll begin in level two. Today, you will focus mostly on movement, light effects, timing, and sound blocks. You'll dive deeper into loops in the next lesson. Click on movement in the left panel. Add one of each type of block to your workspace by clicking on the block or dragging the block to the workspace. You should now have seven blocks in your workspace. Connect them together by dragging one below the other. The block you are clicked on or moving will be outlined in white. When you let go of a block, it will click and connect to the other like a puzzle piece. When you're finished connecting the blocks, look at your program and make a prediction about how your bot will behave. Be sure your bot is connected to Ozo Blockly. Then click Run Program and observe the movements of your bot. Can you tell when the bot switches from one block of code to the next? After you have run the sequence and observed your bot, use the drop-down menu in each block to change the direction, distance, speed, and timing of each block. Then run the program again, observing the changes. Next, click on the light effects in the left panel. Add one type of each block from the light effects panel to your workspace. You won't be using the turn top light off block in this step, so delete that block. You can right click on it and select delete block. You can drag the block to the trash can or you can drag the block into the side panel. You will insert one light effect block after each movement block by dragging the light effect block between the two connected movement blocks until you see the white outlines. Drop the block and they should click together. You should have a movement block, a light block, a movement block, a light block, a movement block, and a light block, and etc. Notice that the sequence of our program happens to be a pattern of movement, lights, movement, lights. Keep in mind that a sequence is simply instructions given in a certain order. It does not need to be a pattern. Let's run the program.
Insert a light effect block after each movement block. Adjust the top light color by clicking on the colored box within the block. Run your program and observe each light effect. What did you notice about the top light color? Did the light effect performed between each movement help you see when one movement stopped and the next movement began? Now you'll work with the sounds category. Click on sounds in the left panel. Add one type of each block from the sounds panel to your workspace. The sequence you are creating contains a pattern of blocks that includes a movement block, a light block, and a sound block. That pattern should repeat seven times. Since there are five sound block options, you will need to duplicate two blocks or duplicate one block two times. Click on the block you want to duplicate. You can tell that it is selected when the block is outlined in white. Then click on the duplicate icon. You can also right click on the block and click duplicate. Add one sound block after each light block. Adjust the sound blocks using the drop down menus within each block. Let's run the program. Run your program and observe the behavior of your bot. Does it perform one movement, one light effect, and one sound seven times in a row? Next, click on the timing category. There's one weight block for the timing category in level two that includes a drop down for how many seconds you would like your bot to wait or hold still. Move the weight block to your workspace. Where in the sequence would you like your bot to stop and wait? Let's run the program. Can you use 
use the drop down to adjust the time, then insert the weight block into your sequence of your program. Run your program and observe how the weight block changes the behavior of your bot. Now that you are familiar with the blocks in the movement, light, sounds, and timing categories, you will use these blocks to create another sequence to program your bot to travel in a rectangle. Your bot needs to show a different color light on the top LED for each side of the rectangle, and your bot needs to play a sound at each corner. Use the blocks in level two to complete this challenge. Run your bot and make updates to your code as often as needed to check that your sequence of blocks is correct. This is called iterating. Can you run your program and observe the sequence of the behavior of your bot? Iterate your program by making changes to your sequence and testing to get the desired outcome. Well done. Be sure you've completed the following. Did you add blocks from each category to your workspace? Did you put the blocks in a certain order to make a pattern or sequence? Did you add a weight block to your sequence of code? Did you observe how the bot reacted to a change in the sequence of code? Did you create a sequence that traced a rectangle with lights and sounds in appropriate places? Come back again soon for our next lesson.